<laughs> awesome. I hope that was fun for everybody. It was certainly fun for me. Oh my gosh. I was born in the eighties and I love me some Justin Timberlake. Oh my gosh. So if you like NSYNC or Backstreet Boys, comment below. <laughs> I am definitely a NSYNC kind of girl. So thanks for joining me tonight. I am so excited. It's Sunday, eight o'clock. We're going live with Activity Director Resource each Sunday at eight. So make sure that you continue to watch, um, like our page and follow us there and you'll get all the tips and tricks and information. So tonight I've got a few tips for you, a dose of Jesus, and trust me, I'm going to keep it real. Um, so make sure you grab your drink. I've got my drink here. I am drinking coconut water in a wine glass because it makes me feel healthy as well as fancy. <laughs> so make sure you grab your drink. Uh, tell me what your drink choice is below. I'd love to know, like, what are you drinking tonight? What is your uh, drink of choice? So first thing, let me... Um, know that you're here. Okay. So first of all, let me know you're here in the comments down below. Make sure you comment where you're from. Um, while I'm talking, feel free to ask any questions that you have either on topic, off topic. Um, and I'm going to do my best at the very end to answer those. Um, and if I don't have answers, I pretty much guarantee you that somebody in this group is going to have answers for you. And if I don't have them or they don't have them, I will find them for you. Um, so question for tonight. All right, question, you ready? I want to, you to think back to when you got your first job, like your dream job, the job that was like super exciting for you. Um, and I want you to remember whenever you got that job and oh my gosh, like signing that offer letter and feeling like I got my own office and my keys and you know, I'm the activity director or whatever role you might be in. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm just super excited, right? Can you remember that feeling of just being excited about the new opportunity, the new career, um, the growth? Okay. So everybody got that in your mind? So picture that. So I'm thinking back to the company that I'm with right now. Um, and I got called actually by the CEO and she did a two hour interview with me, two hours, two hours. And um, I then got called back for an hour and a half interview with the vice president team. That was uh, pretty intense as well. There was probably five of them at the time. And I was so excited after all of those interviews. I was so excited when I got that offer letter, right? I could not wait to get started. I was just beside myself. And I have to tell you, four weeks ago, I was like, what in the world have I done? <laughs> right? What am I doing? Um, in the beginning, I would literally tease when I got the, the job, I would tease everybody and say, oh my gosh, I found the perfect company, right? I'm going to retire with this company. This is my company. And um, over the last couple of weeks, since COVID-19 has hit, I have literally been saying, teasing, of course, I'm going to retire after COVID-19 is over. Can I get an amen, right? <laughs> I mean, this is just crazy. It is so crazy and it is difficult for every person in our profession, everyone working in healthcare, it is very difficult. And so my encouragement to you is um, whenever you are feeling like it. So first of all, I want you to comment below. If you have an emoji, okay, if you feel like that, if you're like, oh my gosh, I just want to like literally quit. Okay. I am so done with this and all this COVID is putting so much stress on me. Come on, let me feel the love, okay? I, that's how I'm feeling right now <laughs> in, in, in the position that I'm in, in our building. So what happened to that initial excitement, right? What happened to the excitement of, oh my gosh, I got my first job, my dream job. I want to retire from here. Why now is it like, hey, I don't want to retire from here, right? I don't even want to be in healthcare any longer. I mean, what, what has happened? Why is that happening to all of us? So research actually shows that no matter how excited we are to initially get that first dream job, okay, after a very short time, our brain starts focusing on the competition that it brings or the workload that it brings or the hassles or the stresses that it brings, um, as well as the complaints, okay? And our brain is just overwhelmed by all this negativity. Um, and I'm the world's worst. Okay. I first to admit I am the world's worst. When I first started 
as the activity director, um, where I'm at right now, I did like all of this new stuff, okay, new and exciting. I had live auctions going on. And I mean, I had guest speakers that were coming in, like a beekeeper coming in in full costume and speaking to the residents. And our groups were huge, okay, compared to what they had before. We had 30 plus people in a 100 bed facility coming to one small activity. It wasn't even a big event. It's just our small activities were running in the 30s. Um, and so over time, those things were just expected. Okay. It wasn't big anymore. It was just expected. And so the great success that I was having was becoming old news, which then the discouragement and my unhappiness set in, right? Because I want to feel excited. I want to feel successful and happy in what I'm doing. So most recently, okay, we've all been overcome by this thing called COVID-19. Um, and I see people posting on Facebook all over. I'm part of um, activity Facebook groups, as well as administrator Facebook groups. And on both groups, I have literally seen people posting, I don't feel like I'm doing a good job. Okay. I'm not doing my best or I'm not doing enough. And um, I'm not happy where I'm at. And I think I need a new career and a new job and I'm going to retire. And my coworker did X, Y, and Z. Okay. Nobody's getting along. So that's because many of us are finding our happiness in the things around us. Okay. But research shows that only 10% of our long-term happiness, so your long-term happiness, only 10% of that is predicted by your external world, okay? Everything outside around you, only 10% of that matters for you to be happy long-term. And I don't know about you, but I want long-term happiness, okay? I don't want this, I feel great when I start this new job and then it's just not fun anymore because of all the stress and the complaints and things that are coming in and not getting along or having to fire people. I mean, there's a ton of things that are stressful and negative in our career. And so I want long-term happiness. Um, and they say that 90% of it is predicted by how our brains process the world around us. What? That's really good news, right? That's good news because that means that I can have happiness. OK, I can get long term happiness because it's all up to me. It's all up to how my brain is processing. So if you are just joining, make sure you're commenting down below um, with your name and where you're from, uh, as well as what your favorite drink is. My drink tonight is sparkling coconut water um, in a wine glass to feel fancy. <laughs> so make sure you're commenting below. Um, so not only do I want to be happy, but I also want to be successful. So I know that my long-term happiness I can get from inside, right? From my brain, how it's processing. But I also want to be successful. How about you, right? If you want both success and happiness, please comment yes. Okay, yes, yes, I want both. Um, so I have always thought that my success would make me happy. I always thought that I thought if I got a better job or if I did more things or um, if, I was more successful in my job that I would be happy. But recently, especially with COVID-19, I have realized that my success is not going to make me happy because quite honestly, I feel like I am successful right now. I am um, in the, the position that I'm in, but I am stressed and overwhelmed, right? Stressed and overwhelmed. And so research shows that 25% of our stress is predicted by our optimism and seeing stress as a challenge, not a threat. So when COVID hit, uh, my CEO came to me and was like, you are taking this really hard. She said, you are, you're taking this really hard and you're taking it very personal. Um, a lot more than I am, she said. And I have to tell you that my CEO is one of the best mentors that I have ever had. Okay. She is fantastic. And I was taking it very personal. I was stressed. My mind was very fogged. And honestly, um, I could have quit. Okay, I could have just been like, goodbye, right? I do not need this job. I am leaving and I will go be an OT again. Like, this is crazy. I am, I am so stressed. Um, and a lot of times we think that a new and a different or a better job is going to help us solve our problems. Okay, however, there's going to be stress there too, right? It's not always greener on the other side. And so 
uh, those of you who don't know, I was going to introduce myself too. So those of you who haven't seen me speak or seen any of my webinars, I'm actually an occupational therapist by education. Um, I've been a life enrichment director. I've been a rehab director. And currently I am a healthcare administrator at a facility where we have 100% residents who have dementia. So it's a nursing facility, um, all dementia unit. Uh, we currently do have COVID in our building. So I am right there with all of you. I know how that how that is. Um, so anyway, we want a newer, different, better job. Okay. And in my mind, I was thinking, okay, I'm the administrator. I'm just done with healthcare altogether, right? I'm just getting out of this. There's just too much stress. But when we reach a goal, okay, instead of us enjoying our successes, a lot of times we just raise our goal. Okay. And as an administrator, I'm terrible about this. And you might, as an activity director, be the same way. You meet a goal and you're like, okay, I got to do better. I got to do better. I got to do better. Instead of just being happy where we are and happy with our success, we're constantly trying to do better. And if our success and our happiness are linked together, then we're never going to be happy, right? We're never going to be happy. So we're going to continue to see people making comments on Facebook of, I'm just not happy. I hate this job, right? So what are we going to do? Okay. What are we going to do? If we want happiness and success, we have to learn to be positive in the present. Okay, we have to be positive in the present. You can have new, bigger goals, right? But you have to be positive in the present and not let your environment shake you. I tell my team this all the time is you cannot let the, the environment or the situations that are happening around you shake you. You've got to be consistent and positive. Okay, so this is actually gonna give our brains a happiness advantage. Awesome. I love having advantages <laughs> to anything. And so it's going to give us an advantage. Um, so an example, this weekend, I get a call from our director of nursing and she says, hey, Bailey, I got to tell you that we have another resident on a different unit, not our isolated unit that could possibly be showing COVID symptoms. Okay. Originally, my thought would have been, oh my gosh, like, how are we going to handle this? I don't know what to do. Okay. And just total panic. Um, and <laughs> this time it was, you know what? That's all right. Okay. We've got a process in place. We, we know what we're going to do. We know what staffing we're going to have. We know how we're going to block off things. We know what PPE we're going to have, where we know where to get the PPE. So this time it was like, I am not going to go there. Okay. I'm not going to go to the panic, the negative. I'm going to stay really calm. And I have to tell you, it definitely helped to keep my mind clear to make better decisions. So our brains are actually designed with this, this thing called dopamine. Okay, you might have heard this if you've studied a lot of Parkinson's. So dopamine actually floods your system um, when we're positive, and it is proven to perform significantly. We're, we're proven to perform significantly better whenever we have this dopamine in our system. Okay, and when we're positive. Did you know that creativity actually rises with this? I need more creativity, okay? Energy rises with this. I definitely need more energy. Um, and our intellectual well-being rises whenever you have more dopamine and whenever you're positive, okay? I that Those are things that I need, okay? It doesn't only really just make me happier, but it makes me clearer, okay? I'm, I'm able to think clear and my learning centers all open up and I'm able to use a lot of my brain to help me make decisions in the directions that I should go depending on uh, the situation at hand. So how are we going to get our brains to be positive in the present? Um, we're going to take five minutes per day for 21 days. Okay. I'm going to challenge you. Okay. This is going to be our Facebook challenge in ADR, Activity Director Resource. We're going to take 21 days and we're going to do at least three of the five of these. All right. So the first one, you ready? Three gratitudes. Super easy. Okay. Actually, it was really weird, but this was in our weekly compass packet that we put together. Okay. So we had the residents writing down three gratitudes for the week, three gratitudes, just writing something positive. I have a um, app that I use on my phone. It's, you can just search gratitude or gratefulness and it will give you apps that you can actually type in things that you're grateful for at the end of the day. And my app is set to remind me as I'm laying in bed, scrolling through Facebook to reflect on my day and write something positive. So my encouragement to you is download the app and start thinking about things that are positive, okay? And reflecting on those. What that does is it helps our brain to scan back our day and we pass all the negative things and we go to the positive things first, okay? We gotta trick our brain. The second thing, journaling, 
All right. If you journal one experience that you've had in the last 24 hours that's helped you um, or that's been successful, okay, that's going to help you to relive that moment. Okay. Just like I did in the beginning, right? I was asking you to relive your experience whenever you uh, got your first job. Same thing. Okay. You're going to relive that experience. It's going to release dopamine in your brain and you're going to feel a lot better. Third thing, exercise. Nobody likes to exercise. I have been trying and trying to get back on a routine. After my baby, I'm like, okay, I got to eat better. I got to exercise. And I tell you, every time I start on the right track, I am not joking. Something else happens like COVID-19. I'm like, dang it. I'm getting you know, in this routine. And all of a sudden, I'm just not in a routine anymore. So exercise, even if it's just a few squats before you go to bed, I'm not asking for hours, just something to get your body moving. Okay. Or like we just danced earlier, whenever we started this, if you missed that part, so sorry, you're going to have to rewind and watch, but, um, so yeah, dancing to music. Okay. That could be exercise. So think and get creative with your exercises. The fourth thing, meditation. All right. So meditating, um, this actually allows you to get over the cultural expectation of doing things like multitasking, doing multiple things at one time. So meditation. The fifth thing is random acts of kindness. All right. So I like this one. Um, this one, I am going to really work at hard this week um, and hopefully over the next 21 days. So my challenge is to you to send one email a day to a leadership team member, and then you can send it to other team members if you want, but at least start with your leadership team. So every day, send an email to them thanking them and telling them how great they are and that you're there to support them. Okay. I'm going to challenge you to do that. I think you're going to be surprised at how different your relationships with your team is going to be. All right. So those are the five things that you can do in order to help to increase your positivity. All right. And being positive in the present. So the first one was three gratitudes. Okay. The second is journaling. The third is exercise. The fourth meditation. And then the fifth is random acts of kindness. So not buying the person at Starbucks, that's easy. Okay. But actually talking to your coworker and sending them an email to tell them how great they are um, and giving them a compliment for the day. Okay. So commit to me three out of five. If you'll commit, comment down below. I'm committed. Um, I'll get Casey and I will post uh, reminders up on our Facebook page for you so that you won't forget. And so that I won't forget. Um, but 21 days. Okay. So on Sunday, the 24th, I believe it is. So Sunday, the 24th will be our 21 day mark. So on that day, we're going to come back and see the experiences that we've all had and see if the, the positive in the present has definitely helped our outlook uh, during one of the most stressful times in our career. My CEO told me the other day, she goes, Bailey, you just need to stick, stick with it, right? Just continue on the course because this is gonna be a defining moment in your career, right? This is a defining moment in our career. So we wanna stay positive. We wanna stay clear in our minds. We wanna make good decisions. We want to be the people that in the end can look back and think, I did a good job through that crisis, right? I did a good job. I might not have done everything that I had done before, but by golly, I did a good job. So I hope that helps you. And I hope you will commit with me to doing the five things over the next 21 days. Um, so make sure you're commenting your questions. I see a ton of comments coming through, but make sure you're commenting questions you might have. It could be on topic, off topic, however you want. If you have other questions for me, I know that it's exciting to get to go live. So y'all keep commenting if you need advice on activities or COVID or environment or leadership or any of those topics. I am pretty good at that. If not, someone in the group will help answer. So the, I have a giveaway at the end that I'm going to do. Yay! And I also have some announcements. But the first thing that I want to do is we always end on ADR, Facebook Live and prayer. And I do this with my team at work. Every morning we start with prayer um, just to kind of get us on the right track. And so since this is designed on Sunday nights at eight o'clock to get us all on track together for the next week, um, you know, activities strong and going forward, uh, I want to end in prayer and I hope that this will help strengthen us uh, for the for the week to come. So if you will pray with me and then I have some announcements and talk to you about how you can get the giveaway and what it is. All right. 
God, I come before you this evening. God, I just thank you for the people who are watching. God, those who have come and gone and God, those who are going to watch as it's recorded. God, I just pray that you would be with us this week and help us to be positive in the present. God, help us to give the random acts of kindness. God, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Help us to change relationships with our coworkers. God, help us to, to see how we can be your hands and feet. God, use us this week. Uh, to do your work. And for us, God, please help us to give you the honor and the glory in all that you do. God, we just love you and we thank you in your name I pray. Amen. All right. So exciting news. Um, I have a giveaway. I'm actually going to give away one of these shirts. So you can say whatever profession you want it to say. So if you want activity director on it, whoop, that's good too. Mine says administrator. Um, but if you want activity director, I will get you a shirt. So the way that you're going to get this is the people who comment the most are going to go into a drawing, not just random commenting, but everywhere that I said, hey, leave a comment below, answer those questions for me and I will put your name in a drawing and you can get one of these awesome shirts. Uh, so I will be mailing those out to you all. I did have my list of notes here. I'm a note maker. Okay, this is what keeps us on track. So Nurses Week nominations. Nurses Week is coming up. Nursing Home Week is coming up. Um, so Nurses Week nominations. We have on Activity Director Resource Facebook page, we have a, um, a post that asks you to nominate one of your nurses. Okay, so I want you to give me their name as well as why you nominate them. And then I will be choosing one of the nurses and I have a wonderful gift basket that I'm going to be uh, mailing out to them. So make sure to nominate one of your nurses in your community. And how awesome would that be? They win and you can say, hey, I nominated you and you won. All right, so no, nominate your nurses. Um, the other thing is just the the interacting and, and being entered to win the shirt. So make sure to interact. All right, let's see if we have any questions. We do have questions. How do you, how do you deal with fear in residents an assisted living facility? All right, good, that's a good question. Um, what kind of fear, Erica? So Erica's asking. I'm like, <laughs> hi, Courtney. Courtney actually is the one that made uh, these shirts. So she is one of the most amazing activity assistants that I know. I've worked with her personally, so I'm excited that she's here. So how do you deal with the fear? Eric, are you meaning like fear is in like wearing masks? Or are you just saying fear is in general? I think with residents who are living in assisted living and the fear, you've got to figure out, first of all, where what they're scared of. OK, is it the fear of being alone? Is it um, the fear of the sickness? Is it um, I mean, what what is the root cause of the fear? And then I would try to eliminate that trigger. So the same thing with behaviors. OK, we, we do this a lot. Or I train a lot with this on behaviors is you got to figure out what the root cause of the behavior is. And then you can fix the problem. So whatever the trigger is that that causes that that emotion or that that behavior. So I think with the fear, same thing, like figure out what they're fearful of and then work really hard to eliminate that trigger if possible. Um, and I, I mean, I'd love to talk to you about that separately on maybe giving specific examples. Um, but yeah, fear is one of those things, especially right now, fear of COVID, fear of catching it. Uh, in assisted living, you know, they're really independent. Okay, yeah, so scared of virus getting in and how admin is handling it. That's a that's a great question. So if you have residents who are very alert um, and able to communicate and understand what is um, you know going on and they understand what the virus is and they're worried about it getting in, I would educate them on your processes. So I have to say, so we started this process in my building um, weeks before COVID came, like before we actually got COVID in our building. Um, I started a weekly call, like a Zoom call, kind of like this face to face with all of my families. Um, and I invited them all to be on the call to hear what processes I was putting into place. I also did this with my staff. OK, and our residents have dementia. But if I was if I was in an assisted living or independent living, you better believe I would have done the same thing with my residents, too, that could understand what was going on, because I think the more we can be transparent and honest and open with our processes and here's what we're doing and here's what we're seeing, the more people trust you. I mean, the, the more they trust you. I cannot tell you how supportive my families are of, of my building and my, my team because we're transparent and open. And I get on the call just like I am here with you. And I say, 
you know, here's, here's the deal. This is how many residents we have with COVID. This is the unit that they're on. Here's my staffing numbers. Here's my challenges. Here's the things that I'm needing. I mean, I, I put a word out that I needed cleaning supplies and you, oh my goodness, like tons of cleaning supplies were just dropped in. So do the same thing with your residents. Okay. It's okay to say, you know, here's, here's what we're doing. You know, this is, this is the way we're protecting. They say that the virus can come in. So we're protecting you by us wearing masks and goggles. We want you to wear a mask and a goggle. Okay. Even the cloth mask, we have to uh, offer those now to residents, offer them eye protection. You know, if you can get a hold of eye protection, offer them that that's, that's my thing. And I keep telling my team, this is I want you to be safe. Okay. And when I get on to you for not wearing your mask, it's because I want you to be safe. The same thing with the residents. We want you to be safe. Okay. We're going to do everything in our power. We're going to clean, we're cleaning your doorknobs. We're, you know, cleaning all the high touch areas. Um, and so explaining to them your process, I think that will help eliminate a lot of the fear is being open, transparent in that communication. So I hope that Eric, I hope that helps. You can tell I'm passionate about this right now. I just, I, I really am big. Any team that I lead, I always want to lead and just be transparent. You're going to know exactly how I feel and what I'm doing. How do you mot motivate other facility staff to engage residents in in-room activities? Yeah. So this is a big one right now, okay? Because we don't have enough team to actually engage with the amount of activity assistance we have. We just do not have that. And so when I met with our team, we talked about, <clears throat> you know, right now we stopped all visitors, okay? So that's that's one less thing. Now I'm not talking COVID unit because I'll, I'll tell you in my experience on the COVID unit, okay? Most of our residents on there are sick, okay? Your residents on the COVID unit will be sick. If I had the flu, you better not be asking me to get up for bingo. Okay. I mean, just saying, like, I don't want to interact. So don't ask me um, to get up for bingo. So if you're, if your residents are, are well, okay. And they're not having visitors, then your team's going to have a little bit more time to help with doing activities and doing the one-on-ones and really teaching them and educating them. Okay. And then giving prizes for, it. I mean, we have done so much staff appreciation just like crazy. Um, I mean, donations and food. And I'm telling you, we have we have done a ton for our team. And so me asking more of them right now, I think is is OK. And really telling them why, you know, our residents and explaining to them the emotions of it. You know, our residents aren't seeing their families anymore. Like you get to go home to your family still. But they don't get to see their family anymore. So we need your help that when you're in their room, be present with them. Okay, be present with them, know them, um, and then give them the resources that they need. So if it's, you know, supplies they need, then give that. If it's stuff to do, you know, reminiscing with, then give that. If it's life stories on the resident, you know, give them information on the resident so they can sit and reminisce with them to make that little bit of interaction really meaningful. And that can be part of your part of your one on one. So I encourage everybody right now when you are with a resident, be present with the resident. Okay, be present. You've got to put everything else out of your mind and just be with them. Get get and meet their needs. All right. I work an adult day. So this is um, another question. I work an adult day and we have been closed since 317. Yes, ours has too. We have an adult day. Um, I'm providing weekly activities for our families and participants and our director has been making calls, but our families are start are stating how much of a decline they are experiencing. Yeah. I know that's the hardest part, right? It just breaks my heart. What is the best way to continue keeping them active when we only have email communication? Okay, so did you did you get the activity packet would be my first question. So the weekly compass, I have to say, was kind of designed for that matter. So on our website, there's a weekly compass that walks through all of the areas of wellness. Um, and if you have the ability to do Zoom calls with them, you could do Zoom calls. I know that one of our dementia-friendly uh, organizations here in our city started an everyday activity from 10 30 to 11. You could do the same thing. Get on a Zoom call and do an activity. Tell them what supplies they need. Have them sitting. They can see you and interact um, with you as well as other people. You can get the activity packet and send that out. It actually has uh, pictures of exercises um, so they could have the, the exercise and engagement. Uh, I also started because of the problem. Um, I started, well, the decline. I have started a uh, everything dementia YouTube channel to help families because right now our families are struggling, right? Because they can't bring them into adult day. Um, they've got so many, uh, you know, 
questions about, I don't really know how to care for my loved one, or, you know, I'm used to them going and not just being here with me and I can't entertain them for all day long. And um, so the decline. So yeah, I, I completely hear you, but the, the email or the, the YouTube channel I'm hoping will help uh, some of those questions too. So I can send you a link to those uh, so you can share them with your families. And then again, I would get the activity packet, try to do some Zoom calls, maybe even use Zoom call uh, during the day. So your administrator can call and check on them, but then you actually get on and do um, calls with them. So live conference calls. In adult day, I don't know if yours is like ours, but ours are, are more mild stage, like pretty mild stage um, dementia or you know seniors. And so hopefully they'll be able to understand the, the Zoom. I've seen this, but unfortunately, most of it is above our participants level. Yeah. Yeah. The YouTube is um, the everything dementia. I'll send you the link. I don't know if you'll be able to find it, but I'll, I'll send you the link to it. So the the Zoom, if you if they have a loved one that's there, you could get them to start the Zoom call um, and then you could you could complete the Zoom call with them. But um, yeah, some of them we've had to literally walk some families through and I've had a couple of family members say, you know, I never thought I was going to have to get a computer at my age, but I think I'm just going to have to go get a computer because I'm missing all of your Zoom calls with our information for our families. And so they are learning. Trust me, they if they are desperate enough, they are learning. And there's tons of videos um, on teaching seniors how to use Zoom or, or WebEx or whatever uh, system you use. So look for those and encourage them to get on. So great. All right. Patty says, I like that. Sometimes I realize that I am not present with the residents. Yep. I know me too. It's so hard not to think about everything else that I've got to do for the day. So it's, it's very hard looking for a YouTube church service to broadcast to our, yes. Okay. I've got a resource, Teresa. Have you got the COVID-19 survival guide? If not, you need to look at it because my husband, I tasked him to go through and find me all kinds of different YouTube channels. And I want to say there was um, church ones on there. I am not 100% sure, but if there's not, we will add that to it. Um, but yes, church services are great. You might also look if you have like an IN2L, they've got church services on there that you can broadcast um, across all of your TV. You might even look at um, some of the local churches. So you might ask a resident, you know, that's, that's there. Hey, what church do you go to? My grandmother today and her and I were talking and they have... Uh, drive a drive up church. So literally like a drive in movie theater, you drive into church and they all sit in the parking lot in their cars and they have church out in the parking lot. And so they're getting very creative, but a lot of churches are, you know, publicizing it. And so you can see what churches they've attended and then maybe meet their specific needs by rotating churches uh, each week. That would be a, a good idea to kind of meet everyone's everyone's needs. So yeah, look for those resources, the survival guide, as well as um, the uh, weekly compass. So the weekly compass will actually launch a new one tomorrow. Uh, so we have a brand new all week. Last one was like 63 pages. Not sure how large this one is, but it has two themes in it. Spiritual, every area of wellness is met, the physical activity and, and all. Um, and so you guys can use it. You can print it off. You can either use pieces of it or you can use the whole packet. I encourage you to watch the YouTube video that I did. And I, I actually am doing another one for Product Talk Tuesday. We have a every Tuesday I talk about a product. The last couple of products have been um, our products. But I also go over others as well, like the Sensational Motions. Uh, if you do not have that book, you need to look that up. It's also linked on my website, uh, but it's a great book. I, I met the author in Arizona and gosh, she is very talented and super creative. I just could not believe I love that book. So uh, yeah, you utilize the website. Okay. There's a ton of resources on there that, that we're making and putting out just for you guys. Uh, Eric is saying our local churches are doing Facebook lives or YouTube videos. Yes. And you know, something else about the, the Facebook and YouTube. So some of the students you might actually have this resource. It's not church related, but other uh, engagement related. Some of our students like nursing students in your local colleges are looking for projects because they can't go into the nursing homes or the hospitals like they used to. So you could partner with them and say, hey, could you do a you know, live Facebook and all and engage with my residents? Or could you adopt a resident and do a, fa a live uh you know, interaction, video conference of some sort? Or could you record yourself doing a craft that I could show? Or could you record yourself 
reading a book or a story. Um, and so having those recordings and putting your students out in your community at, you know, tasking them with this, that's awesome, right? The, the residents love that. They love kids and younger folks that are, are really, you know, interacting with them. And so even if it's, even if it's electronically, like asking them to do that is, is really a, a unique opportunity that we have right now with students not being in school. So I would encourage you to do that. All right. Did I miss anybody? No. Very good. So any more questions? Yes. So people on tonight, thank y'all for joining. So many names that I reckon like, like that I recognize. Roxanne, good to see you. All right. So every Sunday, eight o'clock, we're going to be coming on live just to get our week started. Um, I'll either have questions that we already have in advance that I've maybe found on. I always like snoop through other people's Facebook pages. Um, but I will I will have all of the, the answers to questions, maybe or topics like this week. I sometimes if I just feel led to tell you all something or if I'm sharing that with my team and encouraging my team to do something, I, I want to share it with you as well. Um, I hope that that you're getting fed. OK, not only just a paycheck, but you're getting fed emotionally and spiritually at work. Um, and if you're not, I hope that this channel will help you to do that before we go into the chaos of the week. Um, Denise says, just got to watch it now. I'm going to try to implement three of the five suggestions. Good. I'm optimistic. It will be make me much happier. Yes, it will. I'm telling you that gratitude app is fantastic because I literally laid out at night thinking, oh, I'm just so exhausted. And then it pops up and I'm like, oh, I got to do this. Okay. I've got to say what I'm thankful for and writing a, a narrative. It definitely keeps your perspective positive. So thank you all for joining tonight. I am I'm so blessed to be here with you all and I will see you again. Uh, next Sunday. And don't forget Product Talk Tuesday. All right. Product Talk Tuesday. It's going to be on the weekly compass. Download this week's. It goes away tomorrow because our new one will be launched. All right. And nominate your nurses. Nominate your nurses. Now's the time. All right. So nominate a nurse in your life that you're like, wow, she goes or he goes above and beyond. All right. Y'all have a blessed week. You'll be in my prayers.